Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to call Sussex County Council regular meeting to Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. To order. Ms. Lee, if you give us an invitation. And may we all stand for the invitation, please, and remain standing for the pledge of allegiance. Let us pray. Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we do thank you for allowing us to serve. We thank you for all of our council members. We thank you for the members of the public that came to witness local government in action. We thank you for our county administrator and his staff. And we thank you for the county, the city, and all that we govern. As we begin this meeting, we invite your presence and ask that you dwell with us and help us to make good decisions according to your will. We thank you for bringing us to the beginning of a new year. Thank you for your past blessings and the blessings that are coming forth. Help us to always live according to the way that you would have us and to love. We ask you to have mercy upon those our men and women who are serving in harm's way, let them know they are not alone. We thank you for those who have served and are successful and are still with their families. As we go through our uh, entire agenda, we ask that you help us to make sound decisions and that when we leave this place, we will be grateful for the help that you've given us. These and all blessings we thank and ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Tonight we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by U.S. Army Governor Michael Lee Joyce, who served our country from 1978 to 2004 for 26 years of honorable military service. He's an Iraqi and Afghanistan war veteran, and he's also one of our brave Sumter County Sheriff deputies. He currently lives in County District 2. Thank you for your service. Thank you. You with the right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Credit, and it's 11 through 20 
on the new and real personal property. In addition, Suffolk County agreed to provide a 35% personal source of revenue credit for the used property because it would be taxed at 10.5%. And that used property would be subject to a 20% personal source of revenue credit for payments going through to 10. Milton Molecular has invested $29,600,000 in new property and equipment and has created 23 of the required 25 jobs as of June 30th of this past year. Milton Molecular is considering an expansion on their existing real property and will require an investment of an additional $17 million in new real property and equipment. And that would create 10 new jobs, 10 more new jobs. As it says to go forward, the proposed expansion is asking Suffolk County to amend the original fee and low tax agreement to extend the investment period from 5 years to 10 years and change the special source of revenue credit on all new real and personal property or equipment to a 25% special source of revenue credit for years 2 through 20, the first year having already passed. That's the gist of it. I'd like to take any questions from the council before we go into the public hearing. Any questions of council? Now I'd like to introduce Mr. Brian Wasserbach from the Economic Development Team. Mr. Chairman, council, thank you very much for allowing us to come here again. I'm very excited this day to recognize Milton Molecular Technologies again and their continued investment in the community. They've been in Sumter since 2014 and have been operating and in 2020 worked on an expansion project when we go to Racetrack Road. That project has been a tremendous success with the information that Mr. Brian just read and this is a great opportunity for them to showcase the trust in Sumter and to continue growing their business. So without further ado, we'd like to just hit a few highlights. As Mr. Brian mentioned, $17 million in additional investment with another 10 jobs. What this basically means is that those 10 jobs is an additional $39 million in payroll for the citizens of Sumter for the next 1 through 15 years that they are employed there. Of course, they can be employed much longer than that if they choose. The average wage is $30.70 with about a $63,000 annual wage. These are high-tech jobs. Very excited for what they will do. It's a great win for the community, a great win for the company. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Greg Hoffman, who's the VP of Operations with Nova Molecular Technologies, and Mr. Will Johnson, who's with Hainsworth Stinkman. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Mr. Chairman and county council members, for the continued support for our company, Nova Molecular Technologies, here in Sumter, South Carolina. It's been a great privilege to be here. We've moved some of our facilities here, as you know, in the past from other locations, and it's been a great business opportunity to be working here. You know, in the announcement in 2020, we committed to $14.7 million and about 25 new jobs at the Racetrack Road facility. That facility has, since that announcement, we've invested more than north of $29 million at that site, exceeding the original commitment by $14.9 million, and have hired roughly 25 new employees at the facility. Things are going very well there. We're looking forward to continuing to grow that site. What we're talking about today is the new expansion, which includes two new phases that we're planning to put in, which represent an additional $17 million and 10 new full-time, well-paying jobs at that location. The project will include new investments in machinery, equipment, building renovations, helping NOVA to further grow the output to serve and the future goes to serve the pharmaceutical, agricultural, and other market segments that we support. These combined projects represent a total investment exceeding $46 million and 35 new full-time employees by the end of 2028. Again, we want to thank you for your continued support. It's been great working with everyone, with the chamber, with everybody in the county. I can't express enough how much of a great it is to work with just every aspect of Sumter County. So thanks again, and we look forward to a bright future for Sumter. Thank you. Thank you. And as Brian said, I'm Will Johnson with Hainsworth St. Croix Law Firm, representing the company. I'll be brief since it's already been summarized for you, but the amendment that's before you 
would allow the expansion to be included in the original fee in lieu of tax agreement and modifies the special source revenue credit under that agreement such that it's a 25% credit for the remaining 19 years of that credit term. Your attorney, Mr. Bryan, and outside counsel, Mr. Jones, were great to work with. They definitely were looking out for you as well. They made sure that this agreement includes clawback provisions that require repayment obligations if the company doesn't meet its commitments, but we felt like those were all reasonable and really appreciate your support. So happy to answer questions if you have any. Any questions? I'd like to say, Greg, since day one, I've known Molecular. The company and yourself has been a great asset to Sumter, especially for what you do in the community and in support of our schools, because I know you know Molecular is very involved in projects at all of our schools, at least some of them anyway. I think you have some that you picked out that you work with every week. So thank you very much. Prior to third reading, and the council taking, we will have public hearing. I now declare public hearing. Open anyone wishing to speak for or against ordinance number 23991. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Dr. Elaine Brunson. I'm located at 301 South Main Street. I would like to speak out. I feel like this ordinance needs to be tabled until a later time. Currently, $17 million worth of revenue credits is not appropriate for 10 additional jobs. While currently we have hundreds of minority business owners at home afraid, wondering, are their business licenses going to be revoked? So on behalf of the Sumter Black Chamber of Commerce, I think that ordinance 23991 should be either tabled or denied until we can get answers to the hundreds of minority business owners who are concerned about the status of their business license. I appreciate the time. I didn't need three minutes. Anyone else? Just as a point of clarification, not to take issue with any of the substantive comments about other issues that would be dealt with, but the $17 million is the projected capital investment. So the special source revenue credits would be nowhere close to that. The $17 million would be assessed at 6%, depreciated, military applied. So just for clarity, that would not be anywhere near the ballpark of the SSRC impact. Anyone else wishing to speak? Any reason why we can't carry this over to the next meeting? Is there any reason why we shouldn't? Because what you were talking about with the business licenses has nothing to do with this ordinance. Right. I understand that. But, you know, we do work with people. And I think she's expressing the sentiment of a number of people in here. And to accommodate the request, would there be any harm in carrying this over until the next meeting? I think it would be for Noble Molecular. Can we have them speak to that? The company is certainly respectful of the council's prerogative to do as it wishes, but they are eager to move forward, make purchases, sign contracts, move forward with their commitments. In addition, we've carefully coordinated with the county staff and economic development teams to coordinate a public announcement with the Department of Commerce on tomorrow morning that we think is probably as beneficial for the county as anybody to spread the word about the good things that are happening in Sumter County. So we're certainly respectful of whatever the council's wishes might be. But as to the importance to the company, it would be important and much appreciated if we were able to complete the approval process this evening. In two weeks, would it interrupt that process? 
we'll, we'll certainly have you that, that in addition to you don't want to come in to the county under a cloud do you we, we would, would certainly not want to come into the cloud. I, I would submit that the, um, the citizens' comments are important issues that the, the county should consider, but I, I, I do believe they would be unrelated to, to what's before you um, today. Um, that would you know, that would be my take, but uh, again, respectful of council's wishes. Anything else, Mr. Wash? I want to move to carry it over to the next council meeting. Was seconded. A motion and a second to carry this over. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Aye. 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 So we have a previous motion and second to approve third reading of ordinance number 23991. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Nay. Say aye. Okay, all this number 23991 is approved. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Mr. Mixon. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, you have, Mr. Chairman, you have in your packet, uh, it is time once again uh, to have a conversation if we're going to move forward with 2024 capital penny sales tax effort. Uh, what we're asking for, staff is asking for tonight is an approval from County Council to go ahead and start that process. You have in your packet a uh, kind of an outline of the dates, uh, the hard dates as well as some soft dates that would need to be accomplished between now and the end of June, the last week in June. Um, the reason that date's relevant, that is the time frame for which we have to put together the referendum question uh, for uh, the ballot. So uh, I won't go through all the specific dates, uh, but what we're asking for tonight, staff is asking for, is a formal approval to go ahead and start the capital finish sales tax process in anticipation of it being on the ballot in 2024 of November. Thank you. Any for approval? Second. We'll move the property segment that we approve the Schedule for the capital finish sales tax in discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed. We have one other item prior to the capital finish sales tax. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Yes, sir. We have with us tonight uh, Jed Jacobs from Malden Jenkins. Um, he actually was in our physical tax meeting and went through in great detail uh, the county's annual audit. Uh, this was on last year's audit, so we're not talking about this year. Uh, just want to clarify that to the public. Uh, this is a, an annual process that we're required to go through. Uh, we hire an independent outside organization to come in and review the county's books. Uh, and with that, I would like to turn it over to Jed. That's right. Present yep. information. Thank All right. You. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you for having me here, everybody. Um, as has been stated, these are the numbers and facts from June 30th of 2023. This is the county's fiscal year in close. So with that, my name is Jed Jacob. I am an auditor from Alden and Jenkins. And as a firm, we have over 100 years of experience and to this day served over 600, 650 uh, governments across the US. I can lead off by saying that Sumter County gladly got an unmodified or otherwise known as clean opinion on their financial statements. As an auditor, it is our responsibility to audit with the standards generally accepted in the United States of America and government auditing standards. It is our objective to provide reasonable assurance that the basic financial statements are free from material misstatement. It is the responsibility of management to prepare these financial statements, and with our audit, we found that the contents of the financials are presented fairly in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. This has led to our unmodified or otherwise known as clean opinion. We also do a report on the structure of the internal controls on a government-wide level. The county complies uh, with everything there. Um, there is one issue of non-compliance, and that is in the uh, schedule of findings that you can find in the financial packet. And this is something that um, 
Sounds like it has been addressed for next year's audit and has no effect on this year's opinion. All right, and we also conducted an audit of the county's two major federal programs, which has an unmodified clean opinion as well. This year, there was a new standard and GASB, GASB number 96, to implement subs uh, subscription-based assets. And the county has elected to set a $5,000 capitalization policy consistent with their other capital assets. And in turn, this resulted in approximately 100 k uh, 100,000 in um, subscription assets that have been capitalized. <coughs> and I, I have a few financial highlights, but you can also find more highlights in the management discussion and analysis. On a government-wide level, the net position for the county is $108 uh, million. And in the general fund, there's an unassigned or otherwise known as spendable balance of about $21 million in resources that can be spent um, and allocated without any restrictions. And with that, um, there is upcoming events for GASB, and our firm offers courses on any anything new coming up in the government world. And um, with that, I'd be happy to take any questions if there are any.